Hello and welcome to my new CSGO skin making tutorial series. I go by the name of Viper in CSGO and I've been making skins and stickers for a while now. Some of my notable skins that I made so far were the P250 chocolate skin, the Glacier collection, the Eruption collection, the Treasure collection, and the Hallucination collection. I have many other skins that you can check out in my workshop link, which I'm including in the description below. So feel free to vote yes on any item you like and click on the follow button in my workshop. Also, do subscribe to my YouTube channel as I will be releasing many useful CSGO and gaming related videos and tutorials. In this tutorial series, I will be explaining my way of creating skins using only free and open source tools. Now, I do use Substance Painter every now and then, but in this tutorial, I would like to show that you can create high quality skins without paying a single dollar. In this video, I will discuss the tools and resources we'll be needing for the tutorial, as well as create the textures of one of my skins. The tools that I use are Blender for 3D modeling and texturing, which I guess is the open source equivalent of 3D Coat or Maya and Substance Painter. I use GIMP as my photo editing tool instead of Photoshop. I use Inkscape for vector illustration as an alternative to Adobe Illustrator. And finally, I use Krita for regular digital art. All the skins that I mentioned a moment ago were made using a certain combination of these tools. I'm including the links for downloading the tools in the description below. Keep in mind that a minimal knowledge of how to use Blender and GIMP is required in order to keep up. So if you're not familiar with these tools at all, then I suggest you check some tutorials on how to use them before proceeding with this one. Having said that, I will try to explain what I do as much as possible. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate the creation of my Glock Extravagant skin and we'll go through the process step by step. For this, we will mainly need Blender and GIMP. In addition, we will need the CSGO workbench materials such as the OBJ files for the 3D models, as well as the UV sheets of the weapons. These can be found in counterstrike.net slash workshop slash workshop. Scroll down and click on the resources and downloads link. And click on the first link which says CSGO workbench materials. Download the zip file and extract it wherever you want as we will be using some of its contents shortly. By the way, since we're still on this page, I strongly suggest that you check out the Weapon Finishes Guide and the Style Guide pages. They give very good technical insights regarding skin creation. So, when you set up Blender and extract the resources files, you'll be ready to go. Now let's open Blender. I'm still using version 2.83, but you can use any other version to achieve the same results. In the Welcome pop-up, click on General. We can go ahead and delete the default cube. Now let's bring our Glock model into the workspace by going to File, Import, and we choose Wavefront. Navigate to the folder where we extracted the, the resources and choose Glock. Let's save our work to make sure that we don't lose anything that we do. Next step is to disassemble the Glock according to the textures that we'll be assigning. This will help us later when we bake the textures onto the UV sheet and will allow us to get better results. In our case, we want the top part to be gold and the bottom one to be wood. So let's click on our model and uh, go to edit mode by pressing tab button and at the top let's choose face select. Now deselect everything and hover over the top area and press L. Everything that was selected now is a continuous piece in the UV sheet of the Glock. However, I would like to add and remove a few parts to our selection. Let's add this area over here by hovering over it and pressing L again. Let's add this area. Let's add these over here. and this piece. We also want the trigger to be golden, so let's add this one as well. All right, so now let's remove the intruding areas at both sides over here. Uh, we can do this by uh, pressing Shift and left uh, mouse click.
other side as well. All right, seems that we're done. Now let's separate the selected part from the rest of the weapon by clicking P and choosing Selection. Press Tab again to go back to Object Mode and we can see on the right now that we have a new object on the top right panel. Let's rename the new object to Gold. One more part that we need to separate is the magazine. Although we want both the body of the Glock and the magazine to have the wooden texture, we can't keep the magazine inside the body because during the baking later it will not be exposed to any light and will appear completely black. So let's click on the on the golden part and let's click on G and Y to move it along the Y axis. We're moving the top part just for a moment in order to be able to see the magazine inside. Now Click on the Glock again and uh, press Tab for Edit Mode. Uh, hover over the magazine and click L. Then hover over the bottom part and click L again. Then click P and choose Selection in order to separate the selection. Let's go back to Object Mode. Let's click on the magazine and press G and then Y to move it along the Y axis. Let's rename this one to Magazine. Now that we have our parts separated, let's put the top part in its original place. Select it and press Alt-G. Now let's cr start creating our new material. In order to assign a new material, we need to go to the Materials tab, remove the, the default material, click on the New button, and let's rename this material to gold. Let's go to the shading tab. This is the current node configuration of the material. Let's start by changing the base color to something between yellow and orange. This seems good. Now, gold is metallic and shiny, so let's increase the metallic value to the maximum and let's set the roughness to somewhere between 0 0.3, 0 0.35, and it already looks much more golden than before. Now we need to add the carvings. The carvings are done by modifying the normal or the displacement of the material. As we can see, the pattern is wavy and randomized. In order to make waves, we'll need the Wave Texture node, and we'll randomize the pattern using a Noise Texture node. And in order to be in more control of the texture, we'll add a Texture Coordinate and Mapping nodes. So, let's combine everything I said. Click Shift A, and go to Input, Texture Coordinate, Shift A again, Vector, Mapping, Shift A, Texture, Noise Texture, Shift A, Texture, Wave Texture, and finally, Vector, Displacement. Let's start connecting our nodes together and play with the values until we get something that we like. First, connect the output, the object, output of the tex texture coordinate to the vector of mapping node. The vector of the mapping node goes to the vector of the noise texture. The color of the noise texture goes to the vector of the wave texture. The color of the wave texture goes to the height of the displacement. And the output of displacement goes to the input displacement of the material output. From here, all we need to do is to play around with the values until we get something that we like. If the current settings suit your needs, then you're good to go. For the extravagant skin, I went with a low-scale pattern to make it more visible in-game. Currently, there seems to be too much noise in the texture, so let's lower the scale of the noise.
and this already looks closer to the look that we're targeting. Let's also lower the scale of the mapping node. This seems about right. Let's also increase the waves a little bit. And the last thing is that the displacement here is too strong. So let's set it to a small value in order to soften those hard edges. I'm going to go with something around 0 0.05. Yes, this looks good. And with this, we are done with the golden part. Let's move to the lower part of the Glock. This part and the magazine should have the same wooden texture. So let's start by removing the default OBJ material and create a new one. Let's rename this material to wood. Keep in mind that there are many types of wood out there with different textures and colors. For the extravagant skin, I went with a reddish-brown high-scale texture. As before, we need a texture coordinate node. We need a mapping node. This time, we will need a Voronoi texture node instead of noise. As well as a color ramp, which can be found under converter. Let's connect the object output to the vector of the mapping node. The vector goes to the vector of the Voronoi texture. The color goes to the FAC of the color ramp. And the color of the color ramp goes to the base color of the, the principal shader. Now we have this tile texture, which we'll need to stretch and give an appropriate color. So let's start with the scale of the mapping. And let's increase the value of the y okay this seems good enough the texture seems good like this so uh, i'm going to leave the settings of the voronoi untouched all we need to do now is to give the texture a reddish brown color for this we'll need to play around with the colors of the color ramp uh, we'll keep playing with it until we get a, a, a result that we're satisfied with. I'm going to fast forward this process as it might take a little bit of time. And I think this looks good. So let's go back to the magazine and assign the wood texture to it. Okay, now we're done with texturing. However, all this time we've been viewing our materials through the material preview. Let's see how it looks like when it's rendered because that's how the skin will look when we bake it. We need to set the render engine to cycles. Let's go to the render properties and set the engine to cycles. Also make sure to set the de device to GPU compute because it will make the rendering much faster. If, you, if the GPU compute is disabled for you, that means you need to enable it. We do this by going to edit, preferences, system, and under C CUDA, you check the GPU card. After that, go to Film and check the Transparent option. Now we need to set proper lights in our scene in order to have the best rendering results. We can either start distributing light bulbs and light areas around the Glock, which will work just fine, or we can use HDRI lighting to light the whole scene. I usually prefer the second option because it gives great results and is much tidier than throwing light bulbs around. If you don't have an HDRI lighting, then I recommend going to polyhaven.com slash HDRIS where you can find many great HDRI lights for free. I'm including the link to the site in the description below. 
download the HDRI of your choice and go back to Blender. Under the shader tab, choose world instead of object. Delete the background node and instead of it, add a, an environment texture node. Connect the color to the surface and choose the HDRI that you just downloaded. Now we can view our uh, texture uh, under the render view mode. We can go ahead and delete the, this light bulb. Now that I view it in the in the render mode, I think it would have been better if we went with the gold uh, with a darker golden color. So let's click on the golden uh, on the gold object and go back to object. Let's go to base color and play around with the values a little bit. Yes, I think I prefer this color more. And one last part that I've just noticed is that uh, in the wooden texture, we have missed a spot. As you can see, uh, in the parts that are facing upwards, the textures still look like tiled texture. So in order to fix that, we go to the wooden texture and we raise the X value a little bit on the mapping node. All right, that looks good. And with this, we conclude the first video in this tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Stay tuned for the next video where we add a few carvings to the wood material by creating a height map.